What's going on everyone? I'm Brian Michael at Kenny's Cooks and today we're going to show you how to make French toast two ways. We're going to take you through the steps on how to make a custard, soak some stale bread, and then we're going to show you how to make one of our more playful variations which is going to be a cereal coated crispy crunchy cinnamon French toast. It's a very quick recipe. It's cool and to, to just break out either for breakfasts on the fly or if you're doing brunch for a couple of guests, family members, or just yourself because the recipe is that damn good. So we just kind of want to highlight a couple of things that'll help you elevate your French toast game at home. One of the big secrets is you want to dry your bread out. Here, I can probably with the... That's, I mean, it's dry, it's stale, right? So this is just challah bread that we let kind of sit out uncovered overnight. And when you let it sit out overnight, you're going to allow it to draw out some of the moisture and that's going to allow it to absorb more of the custard, which is, I mean, that's going to make a killer French toast is the more of that custard you can get into it, the better it's gonna be, it's that simple. Not only did we dry it out, as you can see, we cut it relatively thick. Um, do I have a thicker piece by chance? Like this guy. Like we cut it, we cut it thick. Apparently thicker on one end than the other. <laughs> so, so there are actually two different types of French toast and even, even if you're just making it at home, and that is the French toast that comes with a more dry kind of bready center and then there's the custardy center and that's that's going to depend on how long you soak the bread for so if you go in with a because these are really thick pieces of bread we can do 30 to 45 seconds each side no problem and we'll probably get a nice firm bready center if you like to have that custard penetrated all the way through i would soak it for that a minute and 15 to a minute and 30 second mark on each side not just one side on each side it's gonna be it's gonna be really important to get there for you so we're gonna get started by showing you how to make the custard and it's gonna to come together real quick it's real simple and then that's going to be the basis for us to enjoy a crazy plate of French toast so let's show you how you do that I guess to get the whole thing started we're gonna go in with four whole eggs and two egg yolks so we're just gonna crack a couple more and in it goes don't worry about the yolk cracking because we're just gonna whisk it in in a second anyways So for this guy, I'm just gonna crack him in half. And then to separate the yolk from the white, you're just gonna pour it back in over the side and you're gonna let the excess white just drip back into the bowl. Same deal, and just back and forth, back and forth. You see how we're losing a little bit of the white every time? And then the yolk goes in. Before we add anything else at this point, I'm just gonna kinda give it a rough little, rough little whisking. get everything nice and incorporated and then we're gonna start adding some of the other ingredients to this um, at this point I like to add the sugar I'm gonna go in with three tablespoons of sugar and I'm just gonna get everything nice and incorporated again now you can actually already see just just between the eggs and the sugar you can definitely see that it's getting much thicker you can see it's almost nappe right when i drag it across the pan you can see that big split in the center before the excess kind of draws back and pulls over the top we're going to go in with three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon as well as two teaspoons of vanilla paste If you're using vanilla extract, just use a full tablespoon. It'll get you very similar results. The, uh, the paste is a little bit more concentrated. Now the only thing to do is to add in the milk and I'm gonna add while whisking. There is a method to the madness. You can see right now the end result is a much more homogenous mixture, meaning everything is a little bit better incorporated together. If you, if you mix everything together, then throw in your cinnamon and the vanilla paste, all of the cinnamon is gonna pull to the top and you can tell just from the way that the the eggs and milk are stained in this that it's it's thoroughly incorporated throughout as opposed to being a big chunky separated mess now there's only one more step before we get into cooking and that is we got to crush up some cereal while we're crushing up our cereal we're gonna get a couple of pieces of french toast ready to go and this is very complicated please try to just keep up with us in this one we're going to take a piece of bread and we're going to drop it into the custard all right, I'm gonna repeat that one because we moved pretty fast on that. So I'm gonna grab a piece of the bread and we're gonna drop it into the custard. I know, this is this is really complicated stuff. So we'll, we'll do one more demo on this one before we move on. We're gonna take a piece of bread and we're going to 
drop it into the custard. Now we're gonna let that sit for about a minute and a half. And while we do that, we're gonna crush up some cereal. To make the cereal crust or crumb that we're gonna be using for this, we're gonna go in with one and a half cups of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And we're just gonna get in there with our hands and we're gonna give it a rough go at it. We're just gonna come in, we're gonna grab, and we're just gonna crush it up. The goal on this one isn't to end up with crumbs. It's just to end up with some different shaped interesting pieces that are gonna adhere better to the actual French toast when we're cooking it. And then to this, we're going to add one cup of the uncrushed stuff. And we're just gonna toss them both together. Get everything well incorporated. And, the, and again, the entire reason we did that is just to create an interesting texture for the final product. Uh, this is kind of like a hindsight thing. If you're gonna use a bowl like this, make sure whatever size bowl you're using is large enough to get pieces in and out of with relative ease. That's, that's, the, only, that's the only tip I can give here. All right, so now that we're done with this, the only actual next thing we can do is fully assemble and cook some of the French toast. So we're gonna show you how to just fry off a regular piece in a pan with a little bit of butter. And then we're going to show you how to do the, the guy, the star of the show. This is, this is the one I'm excited about. So in a pan over medium heat, we're going to drop in a tablespoon of butter and we're just gonna spread it around a little bit. Get off this, get, hey, hey. All right. We're just gonna let it melt. It's gonna fizzle a little bit and you can actually kind of see it down here. That, uh, that bubbling is the water cooking out of it, which is going to give us more of the butter flavor we're looking for, which is why, and I know this might sound crazy to some of you, it's exactly why we're cooking with butter, is because we want the butter flavor in there. It's some uh, it's it's pretty advanced stuff I just said there. While it's bubbling up, we're just gonna grab the piece now that the bubbling has kind of calmed down. So and we're just gonna go in with the French toast. So you can see the bubblings on the sides here, and that's that's what we wanted, is we wanted it to start frying as soon as it entered the pan. French toast is not a rapid, ready, done. It, 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 should, it shouldn't be done in 10 seconds. You wanna cook it thoroughly, but you wanna cook it evenly, and you kinda wanna steam it a little bit in the center while you do that, and, and in order to get all of those things to happen, basically simultaneously, you, can, you need a controlled heat to do that, which is why we sit on medium. If the bubbling gets too crazy or out of control, I'm gonna drop it to somewhere in between low and medium to try and stabilize it a little bit, but we should be good. And we're gonna cook it now for about two minutes on this side before I give it a flip and take a look at the other side. So now now we're gonna go in, we're just gonna give it a flip. And it's starting to look really good. This is nice, but we're gonna flip it back over again in a minute to try and get even better browning. By the way, all that butter is really good for flavor. <laughs> and uh, because we added the full tablespoon to the pan we, and we went one side down, we have to find a use for the remaining bit. So what I was doing is I was picking the actual piece of French toast up and dropping it down over the butter so that we could pick more of it up and so that it will help with the Maillard reaction process as well. That or some people you'll hear it referred to as caramelization or the browning or the blah, 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 blah. It's all gonna help develop the color, develop the crust and make it a much more enjoyable eating experience. And I know we're not going through all this trouble to have some whack French toast, so use all the butter. And see, that's a little bit closer to what we're actually looking for, is that very familiar, very diner-esque French toast appearance. I gotta get this out of the pan now. Ready to the other side just to take a look-see. Beautiful. Let's say it's ready to go. So for this one, you can just drop it in and then try to flip it around. I, it's actually gonna be a little bit easier for you if you come in, grab a handful of your crumb, put it down, and then apply a little bit over the top because now we have a barrier so you don't get too yucky on your hands because we're gonna apply just a little bit of pressure from the top down to try and get as much to stick as possible. It's gonna be okay because when I flip it, I know we're gonna lose some and that's fine. If your bread is so soaked that when you press down, you're tearing it in half, you either, you definitely soaked the bread for too long. Um, it's it's actually why, if, especially if you're gonna do one of these crusted versions of the French toast, we, we highly recommend you use thicker hand cut pieces of bread. That will completely remove that headache and that part of the nightmare from the equation. This top part's gonna come off and that's fine. We just have to cut our losses. Repeat this for however many pieces you want or you have. But now that we have coverage on the front and the back, we're gonna take it on over to the stove. So this 
We're gonna spread the butter around in the pan now. We're gonna do a couple of pieces at once here. Uh, I went in with two tablespoons of butter for this one. And then we're gonna start placing, I'm gonna try to fit three pieces. I, I actually think I might only be able to get two pieces at a time in this pan. So we're gonna take our cinnamon toast crunch crusted French toast and we're gonna go down one side at a time. We're gonna get it in. And then I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be able to get one more piece in there comfortably. And then we're gonna check these ones a little bit more frequently because cereal can have a tendency to burn pretty quickly. So we're gonna give this a flip in about a minute's time. To flip this one, I'm gonna to try to create a little bit of space because these are big pieces. And I'm just gonna get underneath it, give it a little bit of support here. I'm just gonna flip it over. And you can see that it's already caramelizing on top with the actual sugars from the cereal itself. And then very similarly, we're just gonna flip it onto its bottom, create a little bit more space, and then we're gonna gently let it down like I've been doing my old man my whole life. All right, cool. Once it starts looking very caramelized on both sides, we're gonna get it out and right over onto our handy dandy tray equipped with a cooling rack because that's what we're gonna to use to bake these off and finish cooking them all the way through. This guy makes a noise, gets a flip. We'll take a look, it's looking really good. We'll take him and add him to the pile. We're just gonna rinse and repeat the cooking process until, you know, just until all the pieces are ready to go into the oven together. Pro tip, I actually uh, try to fish out any of the excess in between batches so you don't have anything burning in there. So the reality is, is that the outside of these are the only part of the French toast that are cooked. Because of how thick the bread is, they need a little bit of time in the oven to finish. And it's gonna take us maybe eight to 10 minutes baking them in the oven at 350. That being said, we've got a couple here that we wanna try in the air fryer to see how those come out before we commit to the oven method. Because if the air fryer is the king of this one, then that's just how we're gonna do this moving forward forever. We got time for it, so we're gonna see what happens. Um, we set up the air fryer and we preheated it to 325. Just because it's a really strong convection oven, I don't wanna, I don't wanna accidentally burn or overcook anything. So we're just, we're gonna give that a shot and if the temperature has to come up, we'll make adjustments. But for right now, it's just playtime. So let's, let's get into it. Full confession time, we've only had the air fryer for about a month, but we have definitely been playing with it to see what's what in there. Look at that, right on cue. He heard me talking about it. Are you ready? Are you open? I'll hit with this. We're gonna add a little bit of the spray, and then we're gonna go in with two pieces of our French toast. And then we're just gonna close it up, and we're gonna let it do its thing. Time around for four minutes. We're gonna probably give it a flip halfway through. It'll prompt us. It'll definitely make us. All right. See, it? two minutes up. We're gonna give it a flip. We're gonna take take a look. Before most. Okay. Looking good so far. Yeah. Do we even need? But it's a question. Uh, let's check the undercarriage. Now the cool th the cool thing about some of these air fryers is it kills all of the cooking method or all the cooking process while it asks for you to flip your stuff. That's actually incredibly convenient and high tech stuff. No, we're gonna, we're gonna leave it. Well, this, this is probably gonna take, I think we can rip the temp up, honestly. About a minute left. Take a look. Okay. So this guy's gonna just, he's gonna, I'm just gonna sit him here. It's definitely, definitely getting more structure here. Let me see how it's doing, cause I don't know which one is the heating element, the top or the bottom here. The top is? Yep. If that's the case, then we're just gonna give it a flipsy. Gonna get it back in. We'll push him back in. And we'll do. We do four more minutes. What is the total cook on this side? Eight, eight to ten. Same, same deal as in the oven, but I think it's it's giving us a crispier outside, which I like. <laughs> The 
I feel nice. You want to touch? <laughs> feel nice. Feel nice, look nice. Is the big the big takeaway on this one. All right, well this is this is undoubtedly the guy. This is this is how we're gonna do it. This is how we suggest everybody do it. But if you can't, if you can't oven three 325 or 350, eight to ten minutes. This is the standard. This is the standard French toast. This is the way you would have seen it at diners, or probably the way you're most familiar with your parents making it for you growing up. And it starts with just a piece down. We're gonna go with a little bit of powdered sugar right over the top. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. And like any other good piece of French toast, you need to come in with just some syrup. And that's it. Just give it a little bit of the drizzle. And honestly, that's the guy. I know me personally, I like to go heavy on it, so I'm actually gonna right in the center there. I'm gonna go much heavier. Because that's how I would want to eat this. This is your new staple, your new gold standard in French toast. This is the guy. This guy is perfectly acceptable for just a random morning that you're trying to make special for the people around you. This guy is gonna get the job done. He's gonna be killer and he's gonna be delicious. We're gonna show you the show piece. We're gonna show you this guy's next evolution in life. We're not just we're not just gonna go buck wild with the, the serving size which we're gonna go buck wild with the serving size. To really dress this guy up, we're gonna go down first with a little bit of salted caramel. Now that we have it down, we're just gonna spread it around. And we're gonna do the same exact thing with a little bit of peanut butter. We're just gonna spread it all the way around on the bottom. We're gonna place him down. And then we're gonna get this guy right over the top there. And now that we have those two pieces ready to go, we're just gonna repeat the sauces. We're gonna give it a drizzle of that salted caramel. And then we're gonna go back over with a drizzle of our peanut butter. And then, not too, too much, because there's already so much going on, we're gonna hit it with just a little bit of the maple syrup over the top. And then this is for tea. We'll throw back to his time at Friendly's. We're gonna hit it with just a little bit of powdered sugar over the top. So this is something you should throw into your repertoire immediately, immediately. The way the kitchen smells right now is, is absolutely incredible and this plate of food is just screaming my name. So we're gonna jump into the taste test now. And I mean, I'm just, I'm gonna try to drag I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get from the edge because I, I. I want. I want to see if I can get this. This audio because like. Oh yeah. French toast the outside. I like because it's hollow bread. I like it to have a nice cakey center. Which is why we didn't, we wouldn't have given it the full crazy two minute soak. But I know some people prefer that, I do not. Probably should have said that earlier, so I don't think I'm like, you know, bullshitting them. It's so crazy. But, all right, we're just gonna go for it. What the fuck? Out of the gates, you get you get really strong cinnamon flavor, as you should. We threw it into the custard, as well as we use the cinnamon toast crunch cereal. The peanut butter is just oddly refreshing because it's just it's just so contrasting in flavor and texture to everything else going. On. Even even in comparison to the maple syrup and the caramel that we have on here, but the caramel is just it's like it's the last thing you get. You get peanut butter and and the caramel on the tail end and then the let me let me flip this over so the camera can probably see it it's like it's like cinnamon french toast cake man i say this like i say this every time we release a video that if you're going to try any one recipe it should be this recipe let it be this recipe let it be this recipe i would like to tell you i could sit here and yarn romantically about the french toast all day i can't but what i want to do is get back into eating it so Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for checking in with us. And seriously, try this one. And once you do, let us know about it on Instagram if you want. Or don't. And just house this. Just just tell tell your friends you came up with the recipe. Tell everybody you know this is your homebrewed recipe. It's it's phenomenal. You gotta try it. That's it. That's that's it for us. We're we're gonna go back to eating, you know? So be good out there. You know, be good, y'all. Much love. Peace.